You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our new website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 20th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the global headquarters of sensible Midwest liberalism. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. It's also the global headquarters of sensible Midwest primal scream therapy. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, they, they tend to go hand in hand. Yes, they do. You know? Someone, What's our deal, Blue Gal? What's our deal? Only one of us is allowed to be in, insane at one time. That's right. And this we afternoon, it was my turn. It was your turn. <laughs> and and so that's, and that we decided, I decided it would be in bad taste to just put a microphone in front of you. <laughs> It would moment. have been very podcastable to have me oh, yeah. screaming and crying about Steve Mnuchin and Jeff Sessions and how can anyone be so evil. But right. uh, And that it really was, I mean, that's why I was melting down. It was just how can people hurt handicapped children like this? Yes. I mean, really, that's just, and just, and, and just that simple. Smirk about it and pocket, pocket the profit and move on. Yeah. Because they're fucking evil. That's why. I, mean, I, I hate to really. I don't know. I don't have any other answer for that except greed. And they're evil. They're evil people. Yeah. They're evil people. They're these are evil fucking people. All of them are evil fucking people. That's not a Can... nice way to start the podcast, Driftland. No, I know. Uh, well, let me let me start it, let me start it a different way. Uh, an exercise that I, I have recommended on this podcast once or twice. Uh, that I stole from Richard Feynman, mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, the uh, nuclear physicist, worked on the Manhattan Project, taught physics for years, played bongos, was the guy who uncovered the NASA cover up of the uh, Challenger disaster. Um, you know, it was cold water. It, it was the cold. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who did all these things. He's a very admirable man, the, the late Richard Feynman. And he used to have an exercise that he his have his class do, and it was deduce from cartoons what the laws of physics are in that cartoon. So, for example. <laughs> You gravity doesn't work until you look down. You run out over a cliff, and you can run and run. The the wily e. coyote can run and run and run and run and run and, until he looks down. Gravity doesn't kick in, mm -hmm. and you you can see, you can reason through um, the laws of physics as you see them, just based on your observable um, abilities as a human being. So you and I don't have any powerful friends in Washington or New York or Los Angeles, right? Right. We've got no relatives who can pull strings and give us the skinny and what's going on and who's who doing who and who's what who's going on and who's powerful and who's not and who's got influence and who's not. Our kids don't go to school with the kids of ambassadors or network executives, right? Right. And, and we, as far as I know, don't belong to any secret societies or special handshakes or signifiers. Get us invited to a seat at the table. We could be retested by Mensa on Saturday if we want. We could. That'd be fun. <laughs> uh, they're not exactly a secret. They're, they're very <laughs> secret. But see, my point is, I'm just a flyover rube. Yeah. Okay? I live. Yeah. I live in the middle of the Midwest. The only thing I know about the world I live in is what I read in the newspapers and what I see on the TV machine. Uh -huh. And from those sources, any intelligent person can deduce an enormous amount about how the world actually works. I think, however, that our view is somewhat warped. Sure. Uh, I don't know mine is, but it warped uh, by watching way too much cable news, yes. which most people do not watch all day long. True. Uh, True. And warped by our educational level. Uh, yeah. Knowing the three branches of government, knowing which agencies do what, for the most mm -hmm. part, and particularly, I mean, this dovetails right into the theme of our podcast. Yes. Knowing when we hear something that it either hasn't been discussed before and why is that right or that everybody knows this and all of a sudden it's being discussed and why is that and the two and stories that i want to, that connect to that mm -hmm. um the deaths of the four soldiers in niger mm -hmm. you tore out a little article on page eight or whatever it was it was in back in the back of the paper i mean in terms of our, of our, our hometown local newspaper. hometown mm -hmm. newspaper yep which runs ap stories right i mean right. it's like a lot of Rip local newspapers mm -hmm. it doesn't have a big huge staff of reporters writing original news stuff they do local and 
high school sports, and that's about it. Yeah. But in terms of national news, it's all syndicated stuff. Yes. And here, you tore this out, and you said... And this, and the this day, was, the day this it was, was reported. 13 days ago, right. The, the day it was reported. The I tore this reported, out of the paper. And it was just four deaths. It wasn't it had nothing to do with Trump. It had nothing to do with who no. called who. It had no. nothing to do with the names of the soldiers hadn't been released yet. We had nothing, no other information other than four right. U.S. soldiers were killed in this attack in Niger in the fight against ISIS in Niger. Here it is. And you right. tore this we're... out and you said, this is right. on like page seven of the paper, Fran. Right. Did you know we were having a war in Niger? Did you know we had U.S. soldiers in Niger? Mm -hmm. and, or Niger. Or Niger. <laughs> Did you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I didn't know. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Yes, it's kind of weird. Why... Why has the war gone to that country with American soldiers present and in harm's way? Right. And we didn't know about it. Yes. It, it really it absolutely caught my attention. Yeah. And the reason I gave the lead up to so you know that I gave was that I, I believe our education level and I believe our, you know, our, our viewing of cable as part of our job, mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It gives us a certain perspective. But I'm referring to... I am perfectly willing to say that uh, Steve Mnuchin and Jeff Sessions are evil men mm -hmm. because I can observe their behavior with my five senses. Yeah. I can yeah. see what they do. I can read what they do. There is no other explanation for how utterly despicable, utterly, utterly bereft mm -hmm. of soul these people mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. other than they're evil. They could, this is not a mistake. It's not a rounding error. It's that they're very bad people. Mm -hmm. And, that, and, mm -hmm. and that it's perfectly okay with the Republican Party that they have elected evil men who do terrible things. Right, right. And particularly the... the the ones that that cut me to the heart are the religious right. Yeah. And the people fake, who fake pretend to be on my team in terms of loving Jesus. And mm -hmm. you said to me when I was going through my meltdown, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you want to do a Bible bitch today and maybe go get your Bible and pray a little bit and calm down and relax and you know, commune with Jesus and get something together for the podcast. I was like, you don't understand, Drift Glass. Mike Pence has a Bible verse on his mantle that tells him that he is the saved person of Jesus. Anybody can yes. pull a Bible verse out and right. say, this is, you know, telling me that God is on my side, right? The Phil Oak song with God on their side. Everybody's got mm -hmm. God on their side. And I've always tried in Bible Bitch to make sure that I'm not telling that story. That's not ever my purpose. My purpose right. in, in doing Bible Bitch is to say the same bullshit <laughs> that we are dealing right. with today. Paul was dealing with, Jesus was dealing with, Adam was dealing with, whatever, going all the way back, prehistory, this, there are greedy people and evil people who will hurt others and selfish people and blind to any of their own moral failings people. And then there are people trying to make the world a better place. And that is throughout history. So... I am trying to tell myself, as well as everyone else, that that's listening, and thank you very much for listening, that uh, you shouldn't be overly impressed with the current situation we're in. Because, yes, right. this is stupid Watergate. <laughs> but, yes, yeah. this is also... <laughs> It's also the stupid Pharisees, Katrina. Yeah, and, and but this is also, you know, uh, stupid Jerusalem. <laughs> you know, this is right. back in the day. Stupid Judea. That's what I meant to say. Well, um, can, I, can I insert one more quote? And mm -hmm. it's from right in between those two. Yeah. Uh, both read the same Bible and pray to the same God. Each invokes his aid against the other. Mm -hmm. It may seem strange that any man w should dare ask a just God's assistance in wringing their bread from the sweat of another man's faces. But let us not judge that we be not judged. That's Lincoln's second inaugural. Right, right. Pointing out, you know what? Both sides pray to the same goddamn God. And both sides say God is on their side. And one and pulled Bible quotes out of the Bible to say slavery yep. is okay for yep. eons. Right. Yep. And the other said enough. Right. And so, uh, yeah, there is there is a, um, yeah, I mean, th this is my point. The, my, the devil can quote scripture. My point is not to self-indulge in mm -hmm. uh, endorsement, religious endorsement of my feelings about things. The other side of hearing things that everybody knows, and then all of a sudden they're heard out loud, uh, mm -hmm. is, of course, Harvey Weinstein, right? But also yep. uh, Jeff Sessions. And I wrote about Jeff Sessions all day today. I did four or five posts on Jeff Sessions. Every time he was questioned by another senator, you know, I was put, pulling a new clip and posting it at Crooks and Liars. So there's a lot there. Of course, Al Franken was the best. <laughs> 
house. Because you Al Franken is a liberal, and uh, as a liberal, Al Franken knows that it's his job to remember the past. Mm-hmm. And Al Franken went through and remembered each of the times that Jeff Sessions had answered the questions, did you talk to the Russians? Did you talk to the Russians? And Jeff mm-hmm. Sessions has given four different answers to, did you talk to the Russians? He lied. He, he lied in his confirmation hearing. He lied in his confirmation hearings and said, I didn't. Flat out didn't. Then it was, I didn't talk to them in relation to the campaign. Then, you know, and he just went on and on. And, and the final one was, uh, I didn't talk to them about uh, the uh, interference in the election ever. We, I never right. did anything to interfere in the election. Right, right. So, and, and the thing is, no one on the Senate panel has asked the question, why the hell was the Russian ambassador backstage at the RNC, at the Republican National Convention, with obviously entrance privileges mm-hmm. to be there. Who invited him? How did he the get buffet. there? Why is, I hear the buffet is off the buffet. hook. The Carter RNC Page buffet is, is off there. the hook. Mm-hmm. Carter Page is there. There's mm-hmm. who, you know, is an oil guy from the Soviet. I mean, he he lived in Russia. He worked for major Wall Street banks on oil in Moscow. Mm-hmm. These are people who there should be a question as to why. They aren't donors. Neither one of these folks are big donors who, you know, we just gave them a ticket because they gave us $35,000, right? I mean, you can buy a backstage pass to, I'm sure, any political convention by donating money. That's not it. These guys had a backstage pass to the RNC, and no one's asking that question as to why. Uh, and so Al Franken said, you know, the goalposts keep moving to, you You said, I absolutely didn't. I didn't talk to the Russians. I talked to the Russians, but we didn't talk about this. I talked to them in relationship to my Senate work. Uh, and then, you know, I never discussed <laughs> changing the outcome of the election with the Russians. Right. And, and, so, and right. one of the sentences Al Franken said just made me burst out laughing. It was, mm-hmm. the Russian ambassador is Russian. <laughs> yes. 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 You know, and, as, well, if, as if he had to educate Jeff Sessions. In- well, this is how this is how people like Jeff Sessions think about virginity. <laughs> you know, I didn't put I put, just put it in my butt. <laughs> I put it in my face. I put it in my mouth. I did a, well, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't go all the way in. It didn't move around. You know, this is, and again, it's, it, it is this constant, constant, and it's so obvious. This is, this is the, these are the rationalizations of a four year old who's standing in the middle of the living room with a hammer in one hand and a broken end table in the other, going, I don't know how this happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, except they're running the fucking country. Yeah. And, and the idea that no one's raising these questions, lots of people raise these questions. Mm-hmm. None of them have any power. None of them are, are given any microphone. None of them are given any opportunity to ask these questions uh, because that would cause a lot of headaches. So, again, these are th- the things that you're not allowed to talk about. And, and I'm glad Al Franken was there. Yeah. Right. But Jeff Sessions is going to keep his job. No. Well, and that was the point at the end of my post, which is Jeff, because Jeff Sessions' response to this. And it was really only about 10 sentences that Al Franken said that I transcribed of mm-hmm. he, here you said this, 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 and this. He gave four different answers. This is moving the goalposts. And what you said at the beginning at your confirmation hearings, I didn't talk to the Russians is very different from I didn't talk to the Russians about changing the results of the election. Right. You know, and you have moved there in increments. And here it is. And Jeff Sessions' response to that is, Mr. Chairman, you gave him 10 minutes to talk and and, uh, misconstrue the framing of this whole issue, and I'm only going to have a couple minutes to respond. Mm -hmm. (laughs) In other words, I'm going to, you know, clutch my petticoats and say, how dare you, sir? How dare you? And complain about the the, time. The flower of Southern womanhood has been dishonored (laughs) and storm out, flounce out of there. Exactly. Because I don't want to face job. Al Franken. Because I know yeah. I, I, and this is where this is where the podcast needs our podcast needs to be. We all know it. We know he lied. We saw him lie. He did lie. He knows he lied. Every goddamn person on that committee knows he lied to Al Franken. He lied. Right. We yes. all know it. Yes, Everyone in the media knows it. Everyone yes, at the White House knows it. We all know the truth is that he lied. Yes. And yet. We and moved, yet. And yet. <laughs> and yet. And there's no consequence there's no consequence for jeff sessions uh except 
if Donald Trump doesn't like his lies. Right. Right. If Donald Trump thinks he's not on his side and fires him tomorrow, I kept thinking, you know, if Jeff Sessions gets a little too Jeff Sessiony, right. <laughs> maybe Donald Trump will just sack his ass. He, yeah. He's been he's done it before. So this, but this, there's no consequence otherwise. No. No. And they're not. There was no consequence for Harvey Weinstein forever. No. Until there wasn't. Until there was a consequence. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the big difference. The difference is you have in Harvey Weinstein, and I will, I will include, let me include one more person in this group just to make it more interesting. Bill Crystal. Right. Uh, Bill Crystal is my inclusion here because people with a lot of influence, a lot of power, a lot of clout who are allowed to do enormous damage uh, and, are, and, and it's all covered up by their friends. Mm -hmm. Up until the day... The, the wall of silence is breached. Mm -hmm. And then Harvey Weinstein is gone. He's fired. He's disavowed. He's discommendated. Everyone who knows him has turned their back and say, yeah, everybody knew this guy was a scumbag. We're glad he's gone. Flick him off, you know, this continent like a booger. And, you know, and of course, there, there are dozens of layers of complicity and dozens of layers of responsibility. The person, of course, who's responsible is the man himself. Mm -hmm. Here's the difference. Once it became open, like, like a wound... <laughs> You can see, oh, 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 my God, here comes all the pus. Oh, God. And, and oh, here it comes. And, and now we're going to clean it out, and we're going to bind it, and we're going to heal it. Um, in the case of, of uh, Jeff Sessions, in the case of, of, uh, of uh, Bill Crystal, there's no healing. Yeah. We just go right back. The people, we know that Bill Crystal lies all the time. We know that he lied about Iraq. We know that he got, he's, he was an architect of the Iraq war. He know that he's been a fucking lunatic and an asshole and a bloody scumbag for years. And yet he is an ABC news employee who shows up on NBC and CBS and, and uh, MSNBC all the time. And nobody ever mentions it. Mm -hmm. It's an open secret. And, and the thing is, it's not like it was a, it, it, it's not like that that uh, secret didn't breach. It came out in the open. Oh, my God. The Bush administration <laughs> really was a fucking disaster. These people really were terrible people. Everyone knows. All of Jeff Sessions' secrets are out in the open. Everyone knows that he is awful. No one will turn their back on him. That's the difference. Once Harvey Weinstein became public property, mm -hmm. everyone ran the fuck away from him. Donald Trump is infinitely more destructive and heinous and awful than Harvey Weinstein. And his people will not disavow him no matter what he does. Right. It's like he's standing in front of an audience molesting someone in front of them, mm -hmm. daring them. And they're all like, that's not happening. That's yeah. not happening. No, they're it's right, not happening. right, right, right. And, but we can see it. This isn't a secret. It's, it's no longer a cover-up if, if you know what's going on. If you're playing your cards face up, we know what the deal is. So the question is, as always, why won't responsible people, people in the media especially, just point the camera at Jeff Sessions and say, that man's a fucking liar. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows he's a liar. And, and I refuse to inv invite anyone on my show anymore. I will not put a Republican on my show who will not answer the question, why aren't you impeaching Jeff Sessions for lying mm -hmm. during his confirmation hearing? Why? And I'm sorry, you don't get on NBC, you don't get on ABC, you don't get on Meet the Press, you don't get printed in the newspaper until you answer the question. So that leads to the second question. What, who are the people who are preventing this public conversation from having, from, from us having this public conversation? Yeah. I'd like to, so the, the, the theme of our podcast today, it's been a very long day, by the way, we're recording <laughs> this on a Wednesday. Um, so because, busy... because Saturday is Junior Dude's birthday and we yeah. have to go get him on Friday. So our treatment. life is doing that sort of thing right <laughs> <laughs> right now. So the question is, what are those things that we are not allowed to talk about? Mm -hmm. By we, I don't mean Blue Gal and I, because we talk about everything. But the things that are out in the public eye that everyone knows about, everyone can see, it's perfectly obvious what's going on here, and yet no one will fucking talk about. And the number one thing is sexual harassment. Yes. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, there is a hashtag or there was a hashtag Me Too, which ultimately had millions. It mm -hmm. was 12 million people use that hashtag mm -hmm. uh, because it's something that happens to lots and lots of women. You know, in fact, some, well, there's one article in the Daily Beast that talked about, uh, you know, most women have faced some kind of sexual come on some, you know, some of it can be easily rejected, some of it not, but in the workplace right. that someone has come, 
come on to you in a way that tells you that uh, part of the experience of working here is that your body is a commodity within the workplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like this article uh, is by Lisa Senecal. Uh, She wrote it uh, Monday. It looks, no, I'm sorry, last week. Uh, We have to stop blaming women for harassment at work. Uh, And and she talks about, and this is something you and I wanted to talk about, especially in regards to Donald Trump, which is non-disclosure arrangements, non-disclosure agreements. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because she says uh, they have to go. That when you have an NDA related to sexual harassment um in particular you are catching the woman at a point of shame uh humiliation and uh she's she's a victim still and she has no distance from the crime that has been committed against her Mm -hmm. and uh she has this woman is calling for um all victims of sexual harassment and abuse to be released from these agreements because they need to be heard they choose to be heard they need to be heard and yet this, Donald Trump used non-disclosure agreements on the p- volunteers at the phone banks yeah, that were there calling people to get out the vote. Every single person who had any connection to the Trump campaign, apparently, mm-hmm. has one of these. Mm-hmm. And so this is why there, is, there isn't going to be, with the Donald Trump administration, a whole lot of tell-all books. Oh, I can't wait for the tell-all books coming out of the Trump White House. That's never going to happen because no. they've all signed these agreements. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this is why um, uh, Trump's former press secretary, who's uh, Sean Spicer. The mooch? Sean Spicer. No, not mooch. Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer. This is why his notebooks are of such interest. Yeah. Because the notebooks can't have an NDA, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, the notebooks can be entered as evidence and uh, Spicer can be asked, what did you mean when you wrote this down? Mm-hmm. And he is testifying to the notebook's contents rather than testifying against Trump. And so that is, you know, the notebook is evidence, not Spicer, it's not Spicer's testimony, just the notebook. And so that's a big deal. Um, but these NDAs protect Donald Trump from yes. everything, including the the. Um, his behavior on The Apprentice, and and the apparently the N word that he used a number of times, and wouldn't it be wouldn't it have changed the outcome of the election had we had we heard Donald Trump on tape saying that? Uh, it just and maybe maybe it wouldn't have. You know, we don't know what happened with the Russians. We don't know, but uh, and I I just think those NDAs need to go. Well, now, may I suggest mm-hmm. uh, if anyone wants to read a little bit more. Uh, a guy named Drift Class wrote a post in June of 2016 called The Document That Ate American Journalism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's about non-disclosure agreements yeah. 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 and why nobody who, who leaves the uh, TV world will yeah. ever talk about anything that goes on there. On the set. Yep. On the set or 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 behind behind closed doors. I mean, they will yep. not. Uh, I'm personally interested in, in how people like Bill Crystal keep their jobs, mm-hmm. being that they suck at everything, at everything that their job is supposed to be. They're terrible at, but they can never be fired. They're they're passed around from station to station, hired by everybody, and there are clearly hundreds or thousands of people who know exactly why this is going on. They know exactly why David Brooks can never be fired. They know exactly why Joe Scarborough has a job that he is absolutely unqualified for and gets to have for the rest of his life. There are lots of people who know exactly why this is true, why our journalism is fucked. Mm-hmm. And they're not, they are not they will not talk about it. And they will not talk about it, un, obviously, under penalty of a, viola- a breach of contract because they've signed some sort of agreement that said, I promise not to talk about Joe Scarborough burying a dead hooker with Phil Griffin on thus and so date, even though I was a witness to it. So there's no way to breach this wall um, as long as the people who are on the other side of it are being bought off or threatened uh, into silence. And that's the, that's what power means. Power means the ability to make other people do what you want them to do. And you you can make them uh, sign documents. You say, if you ever want to work in this profession again, you're going to sign a little dotted line here that says you're never going to talk about what you see or hear here, ever. And it's how Fox News is run. I'm absolutely sure it's how MSNBC is run. I know it's how, I know it's how uh, Meet the Press is run. Um, all of our journalism, all, all the stuff that, that we have a First Amendment for is coming from a, a polluted instrument that is has been bent wildly out of shape, does not want to talk about anything that's important or vital or, or, or critical mm-hmm. to our life in this country. 
because there are people who enforce those agreements who do not want to talk about it. Yep. And they all know each other and they're all friends and they all have a back scratching agreements not to, you know, to protect each other right. from this sort of nonsense. Go back to um, Fox News's fight, uh, Keith Olbermann's fight with Bill O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. Um, then they fought and they fought until Phil Griffin and Roger Ailes said, stop it. Yep. <laughs> stop it. Uh, it's hurting our ratings. It's hurting your ratings. It's not getting us anywhere. It's becoming too. And it, it, it's this is a game, guys. This is a game. It's a puppet show. And you're taking it very seriously. And they stopped. Yeah. Because that's because what they do isn't news. What they do is is performance. It's a show. Yep. It's a show. Yep. No, this is why I said that I think our opinions from time to time are warped by watching that puppet show and thinking this is influencing how America thinks about things because a whole lot of Americans don't spend any time thinking about these things that way. True. So and and vote, you know, give the same attention to voting as they do voting on, you know, the dancing reality shows and the, <laughs> yeah, you know, dating reality shows and so forth. It's a reality show. And for Donald Trump, it's a reality show. And mm -hmm. so if he can keep the drama going, which he's certainly done, that's the mm -hmm. one thing he succeeded at as president is keeping the drama going. I'm going to do something in two weeks. I'm going to announce it in about two weeks. Very, very, he's very not near working future. on anything. He's you know, very we're going to do this in two weeks. Yeah. Very soon. Very soon. It's going to, we're going to have these things done very soon. Very short order. Very soon. A couple of weeks. Very soon now. Yeah. And they never happen. No. Uh, and I, I responded to David from today on this mm -hmm. very subject. Uh, of course, Twitter being a, you know, shouting into the abyss, no one ever responds. But Mr. From, who is, again, a Bush regime dead ender, who has been reclaimed and reupholstered for reuse by uh, MSNBC and CNN um, and, and has a contract and is a managing editor of The Atlantic, I believe, um, because no one in that group can ever be held accountable for what they've done. Because then suddenly everybody's going to be held accountable. Or everyone's what did, what did he say? He said, well, who are you going to believe, the president or a vehicle full of witnesses? Which is a good point. Yep. My point was Trump doesn't need proof. He just needs the millions of Republicans who support him to believe he has proof. Mm -hmm. And they will believe anything. Right. That's They'll the believe point. anything he says. Yep. Anything he says. Yep. So that's <clears throat> the, the, the theme of every news show, in my opinion, should be – why are there 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 million Americans who are that completely brainwashed? Because it's not like they don't pay attention. They have very strong opinions about lots of things. Mm -hmm. and well, this is what, and this we've been, brought, gone over this, I think, ad infinitum on the podcast, which yes, is when other networks will not discuss Fox News, right. will not talk about it as a state media propaganda machine. Mm -hmm. And if they a, a, that has 35 million people addicted to it as news, that's what they are. And uh, I don't I don't know if I should say this or not, but this morning I typed in to my team members and said that I just wanted to go Bobby De Niro in the untouchables, you know, <laughs> on the stairs of his hotel. Right. I want the Republican Party dead. I want I want their party dead. I want all of their media enablers to be forced out of their office through the door or through the window. And I want their phones have a flamethrower put on their telephones and turn their offices into homeless housing. And I just went yeah. on and on and on and on. Uh, there, is no, there is no purpose for the Republican Party at this point, except apparently to hurt people. Right, to and hurt people. I don't know what else else to say. If if they're gonna if this is their purpose is to hurt people, and whether they hurt people by taking away their insurance or they hurt them by pretending that they're gonna give them back their insurance, and then the next morning Donald Trump, like this morning, sends a tweet oh. and says, "Oh, nope. I'm against that." Just kidding. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, you can no not knowing you can believe your own president when he writes something. Minute by minute. By minute. Yeah. Because who knows, tomorrow and, and might be entirely different. And as I said to different. you, sitting on the sofa crying earlier today, mm -hmm. I get it that Donald Trump is mentally ill. He's right. sick. He's crazy. He's a bad person. I'm not, I'm not excusing that. And I'm also not lumping him in with people who have mental illness and are dealing with it and aren't harming the entire country. Right. But- Something's wrong with that guy. Right. There are thousands, and I mean thousands, of Republicans backing him up. Yes, there and are. letting him be there. Mm -hmm. Hurting me, hurting my kids, hurting children, hurt, hurt, I'm sorry, hurting disabled kids, and hurting Puerto Rico, and hurting 
pregnant widows of dead soldiers. Mm-hmm. If if you didn't believe before, folks, that it's that it's Mark Twain up in heaven writing this stuff, the fact mm-hmm. that there are four soldiers who died yep. when we had that chanted through our heads over and over again for 7,000 hours of hearings over Benghazi, the same yep. number of people. Yep. I'm, it just every, it's not just undoing everything Obama did. It's doing everything he accused Hillary of doing. Private yes. email servers, mm-hmm. four dead soldiers, mm-hmm. ignoring that, denying that they exist. Dividing nothing, the country. Dividing the country. On yes. purpose, All deliberately, every All fucking day. Yeah, everything that Donald Trump accused and the Republicans accused Bill Clinton, I'm sorry, not Bill Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton are doing, they are doing they in are Spain. Doing. In at, Spain, at, on but, purpose. And, and let's remember that this is nothing new. Yes, everything, that's the point. Everything Republicans were furious at Bill Clinton for doing, furious at him for doing, um, they let Bush get away with um, a thousand worse, a thousand mm-hmm. times worse, and never lifted a finger. They applauded everything he did. They told, they called him a great and good man. They s- sat back and let him get away with murder, um, lie us into a war, sleep through a city disaster, uh, torture people, on and on and on. Just, and, and they applauded the whole fucking time. And, and all of us were doing exactly what we were doing now, helplessly holding up sheafs of paper about what they said when Bill Clinton was president. Said, but wait a minute. You just said that if a president even had a, a suspicion, if there were a hint of impropriety, if there were any smoke at all, you should have hearings right away. It's, and it's your job. A president should be held to a higher standard than everyone else. That's why I have to impeach him over a blowjob, because presidents have to meet this very, very, very high standard. High standard, especially in a time of war. <clears throat> And right. deficits, people. Deficits are vitally important. That's why we can't spend any money on anything except on paying down the deficit that, of course, we created. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the minute George Bush is in office, they toss it all out the window. And they learned. They, these, these, these millions and millions of meatbags all learned a really important lesson that no matter what the fuck they do, no one's coming to hold them to account. There's no vengeful God that will strike them down for being this awful. That they can say one thing and, and swear on the lives of their fucking children that they believe that Barack Obama is A, B, C, and D. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though it's all a lie. Even though you can prove it's a lie. Over and over again, I spent seven, eight years proving to my Republican friends that everything they believe is bullshit. And their answer was always the same. Once the lie falls apart, it's, well, both sides do it. You know, both sides do it. I, I'm not going to admit I'm wrong mm-hmm. because then I would have to go down in the basement and eat a bullet. And I'm not going to do that. I, right. I, I, I like my life and I don't want to face who I really am in the mirror. So I'm just going to pretend that both sides are equally wrong because that's what I've been taught to believe by the media. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. minute, the minute my guy gets in office, I'm going to disavow everything and swear I never said it. And you can hold up all the paper you want and you can say, but what about what, what, what about? And I'm just going to roll on past you because I'm a bad person. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I hate this country, and I hate liberals, and I hate minorities, and I hate women, and I want to elect someone who's going to punish all the people that I hate. And that's really as far as it goes. I mean, Paul Krugman's blog post from <laughs> October 14th, the title of it was, and I quote, lies, 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 lies. And it's and about it's, the tax plan, right? It's about the, it's about the tax plan. It's about the budget. It's like, I, yeah. it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. They're lying. And they're but, lying but, because but they know. But the Bush tax they... cut was all lying, and the Bush yes. budgets were all lying. Yes, they were. And there is always money in the banana stand for Republicans and their priorities. Because, because. the Mercers have deep pockets, and the Cokes have deep pockets, right. and other Republican crackpot billionaires are willing to underwrite this insanity forever. Mm-hmm. They're willing to, to set up entire Randite breeding camps right. in Wisconsin to create monsters like Paul Ryan. So they don't have to bribe them anymore. They just breed them. So you have a, an entire, you have the vast right-wing conspiracy, well-funded with their own television stations and religion and newspapers and so on and so forth, just rolling out like a big old tide. We do this at home every now and then. We know some particularly pungent story comes on the news. We, we, we flip over to Fox to see what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's... It's, oh yeah, um, it's amazing. It, it's, it's amazing. They, if your relatives at, listen to Fox at all, or or they listen to some reflected version of Fox at all, or they get their news off of right wing talk radio, they have no idea about anything you're talking about. You're speaking two different languages mm-hmm. because we're sitting there watching um, this this Russia story unfold further. This uh, attack on uh, the, the refusal to, to to talk to uh, this this lie lying about. 
previous presidents of Barack Obama talking to uh, the, the families of dead soldiers, of dead Americans. Just just lies, just incredible, unbelievable, degenerate lies coming out of the mouth of the president of the United States and the horrible policies that accompany them. Mm -hmm. And you flip over to Fox News, what do you see? Hillary Clinton's emails. Hillary, Hillary Clinton's emails, emails, by the Why way. And, and it's Democrats' fault that Donald Trump... Uh, this is this is Democrats against Donald Trump in terms of the whole talking to the widow of the Niger right. dead soldier. Right. Because what an honor it is to talk to the commander in chief. Mm -hmm. And all he was saying was, we're sorry for your loss. No, he didn't say that. No. That's the point. He, if he had said, we are so sorry for your loss, we we can't imagine how this feels. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we are we we are proud of your husband, son, whatever, whoever you're talking to. Right. We are proud of him. We honor him and we honor you for your sacrifice. And we will do any, everything we can to support you in this time of grief. End of story. If he'd said that, right. different story. He didn't give say a, that. Give him a script. Have him stick to the script. Even if but, it sounds like it always sounds like he's he can't get the words out because he's, he's no, can't Ainsley read. Ainsley Earnhardt on Fox and Friends this morning made up words that she imagined Trump said. Right. That's what she did. She of said, course. Wouldn't it be an honor to get a call from the commander in chief telling you your son was a hero? He didn't say that, Ainsley. No, no, but that's what that's what but that's what everyone who watches that show now thinks, thinks he said. He said. And uh, we again, need to switch gears, Dr. Glass. Well, I, I will I will switch gears after saying one thing. Yep. We flipped we flipped over to Fox last night. Mm -hmm. And what do we see? <laughs> Fox? You're gonna say it. You're gonna say it. Oh, okay. I, well, I have to. And, and I know because he was on uh, Fox. <laughs> because there's Tucker Carlson uh, under the Chiron. Media doesn't own up to false stories on Russia. Dishonest <laughs> reporting. This is where your crazy Uncle Liberty gets all of his fake news, fake news, fake news bullshit. Right. And right. who is he talking to? Glenn fucking Greenwald. Glenn fucking Glenn Greenwald, Greenwald telling us that this Russia story, you know, re reporters are being manipulated. Yeah, they're dishonest. They're dishonest and warped. <laughs> they have a warped incentive scheme, and they're dishonest. And there's groupthink, and they're all warped, and they're dishonest. And I love the video you posted at your blog, the I told yeah. you so dance. Yeah, I fucking told I, I, and, I and here's And here's the punchline. So. Yeah. And I, fuck, I, I told you so. I fucking told you so. There were like four people, myself and Bob Seska included, who were saying, who were saying Glenn Greenwald is not your friend. He's yeah. making shit up. He has his own political agenda, and he lies a lot. And man, I lost a, I lost a third of my readers. Mm -hmm. I got a whole bunch of shit. I haven't written about Glenn Greenwald in in like eight months. Well, I love it when we have Glenn Greenwald free podcasts. Actually, I do you too. know that. <laughs> uh, I do too. I wrote about him yesterday, and one of the purity angels showed up uh -huh. and said, "Dude, why are you obsessing with Glenn Greenwald?" <laughs> you know, why are you obsessing? It was the first time you've written like, about him in 10 months. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> fuck you. But, but that's, that's who they are. That's who they are. So um, there is, there are two entirely different universes. So if you're, if you're confused by why the hell aren't you getting this, they don't, they're not getting the basic information. They're, they're, they're drinking gladly from a polluted source mm -hmm. and they don't want fresh water. They don't want fresh air because it will challenge their, their, who they think they are. It will challenge their sense of identity. They will have to look into a mirror for once in their goddamn lives and see what a, what a freak they have turned into. And well, they're not going to do that. Let's face it, it. It was the perfect Fox moment, right? It was. Because it was. even Glenn Greenwald thinks even that left. this Russia thing has been stirred up by the media, right? And the guy right. I picked for the, for the things, the guy I picked for the, uh, the, the Twitter embed was... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glenn Greenwald, he's not bad for a lefty. Yep, not bad yeah. for a lefty. Boom, yeah. punchline, Boom. and we're out. All right, and moving on. Uh, I just wanted to point out, though, while we're talking about how bad these Republicans are, mm -hmm. that there is a split going on, and uh, the Breitbart chief, Mr. Bannon, <laughs> is flying around the country, meeting with people like Bernie Ma Marcus, the co-founder of Home Depot, mm -hmm. Uh, who's very upset. He gave $2 million to Mitch McConnell's super PAC and hasn't seen any return on his investment. God damn it. Where's my return on investment? <sighs> Bannon's met with John Childs, who plowed nearly $400,000 into Mitch McConnell's 2014 re-election. Uh -huh. uh, Bannon has met with 
Gore-Tex heiress Susan Gore, a major backer of libertarian causes. He's met with Shelley Adelson. Shelley. Can you believe Shelley. it? Can you believe that Steve Bannon got a meeting with Shelley Adelson? Yes, I can believe that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Eric Crown. I love reading these names on the air of my podcast, which <laughs> pays our electric bill. It does. <laughs> these guys have, you know, uh, Ed Borsarge. Houston-based finance executive donated $150,000 to Mitch McConnell's re-election. Hasn't seen a return on his investment. Yeah. Very yeah. frustrated with that whole complex. Are we mm -hmm. supposed to reward failure? Come on, people. I didn't build a giant <laughs> business on the backs of... Louis, of, of... Louis DeJoy, North Carolina business executive, has given over $30,000 to the uh, National Republican Senate Campaign Committee. Said, I'm not interested in bankrolling GOP challengers, Steve Bannon. <laughs> but, you know, we are fed up with the failures. <laughs> yes, all the failures. All <laughs> See, now, But here's the important thing. What do they consider a failure? Not Denying... repealing Obamacare. <clears throat> There's the thing. Do they consider, yeah. like, letting chip... The child health, yeah. uh, children's health insurance program lapse just and just sitting away. on it for week yeah. after week after week, letting kids lose their insurance. They consider that a failure? No. They consider letting the people of Puerto Rico drink toxic water and, and shiver in the dark and, and not know when or if any help is coming ever a failure? Of course not. That's they consider, not even on their radar. They don't no. care. They don't care about the shit at all. That's no. just... Those people are far away. They're not really Americans. They're not really my problem. They want All the, a tax cut for they themselves. Want a tax cut. That's right. it. And they want to get rid of regulation. They want mm -hmm. to get rid of the government, period, full stop, because the government is evil and they want a giant tax cut for themselves. Yep. That is all they care about. And Shelley they Adelson's pay. number one concern is making sure he can raise as much money in Southeast Asia at casinos and not have it be taxed. Right. That's, that's it. it. That that's is literally it. all he cares about. Yep, yep. And that and those people, the, that's the reason Steve Mnuchin uh, exists. That's the reason he was conjured up into existence. That they, 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 they invoked him from the great beyond because he's the perfect mouthpiece for that. And he's willing to say that his giant plan to repeal the estate tax will help rich people disproportionately, almost exclusively. Oh, I can see that. I can see that care. now. Yeah. Yeah. And he said today it's it's hard not to cut taxes for rich people. Right. Right? And so on Fox News, who's who's making an appearance? That, you know, the, the mortal remains of Arthur Laffer. Yeah. He's now on Fox News talking about how the joys of tax cuts. And who and, is he talking to? One person. He's just there to talk to Trump. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Uh, I want to just mention uh, one other thing, and I hate that it's a political article, but it's a political article. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, or, what you know, Charlie, Charlie Pierce calls it uh, Tiger Beat on the Hudson. Um, Thad Cochran, Republican, Thad Cochran, Republican, Tiger, Republican, beat, on Republican, right, Tiger beat on the Potomac. That's it. Thad Cochran, Republican of Mississippi. Uh, very sorry to hear that he's in bad health. That's uh, not something that we wish on anyone. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he's 79 years old. He's a Republican from Mississippi. He's the chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee. And uh, he has had an extended absence due to health issues. We're very sorry about that. Uh, but he has been described by several people as frail, disoriented, and needing a staffer to remind him where the Senate chamber is located. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a problem that keeps happening and it's happening with trump it's happening with uh mccain it's happening mm -hmm. over and over again there the uh democrats are attempting to run in tennessee against marcia blackburn a 73 year old democrat uh former something i don't know anyway mm -hmm. it came up on twitter he's 73 why are we doing this why are we why are we doing this uh strom thurmond you know was mm -hmm. mentally uh, not there. Gone. Not there. The Democrats wheeled Robert Byrd out of his, you know, near comatose condition mm -hmm. to pass Obamacare. And yes. I get it. They were desperate. They had to do it. But these political parties that keep these guys in office because it's easier to re to reelect somebody. Mm -hmm. that, that that power of incumbency is so powerful and you get more money that way and on and on and on. You saw it with Trump and McConnell and the Rose Garden, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, everyone was wondering who was helping whom up the stairs. Right. Um, Two drums leaning on each other. No, well, McConnell had polio right. at one time. Start, yes, stairs are hard. 
Yes, and they are. more than once, Donald Trump has appeared to be concerned about going up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that men in their 70s are, I go down the stairs one step at a time and I'm under 55. Hey, one of the greatest presidents but, in American history wore braces on a legs. He was yeah, paralyzed. And was paralyzed. That's so, not you know, the issue. That's yeah. not the issue. The issue is we need a retirement age. We do. For Congress. We do. And I'm, I am especially tired of hearing that Hillary Clinton at 70 and Bernie Sanders at what, 73? Mm -hmm. Are the, you know, we have to fight over who's the future of the Democratic Party yeah. with those two. No, we don't. It's Biden. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not being ageist here, the guys. I'm no. talking about physical ability to do a job. <clears throat> right. And uh, yes, I mean, my, my dad is 83 and he just moved into a apartment and do, does the New York Times crossword puzzle every day as sharp as a tack. I yeah. get my mom's some the same people way. are, yeah, your mom's the same way, right. capable of in their 80s of doing all kinds of mental stuff. But um, neither one of them is uh, ready to take care of a toddler all day long, right. you know, or to do uh, some really vigorous work that being a U.S. senator requires. It well, just it's does. Time, it's time to, I mean, it's long past time to bring in people of our generation. That Well, into... that's the other complaint, too. And I, I mean, that is generational bitching. I'm sorry it is. But mm -hmm. Patty Murray is ready for leadership. And yes, absolutely. Uh, you don't have to love everything she does. Uh, somebody was complaining the other day about how much she had voted for um, defense spending. Boeing is in Washington state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> She's voting for jobs for her state. That's what she's doing. Bernie Sanders has done the same thing, voted for, you know, military airplanes to be built in Vermont. It's jobs. That's what they're voting for. Um, anyway, I'm just and, and it, it is time to give those folks I mean, we can we can we don't have any control over the Republican Party. But if we had control over the Democratic Party, stop it with this. You have boomers have to vote for somebody that's older than they are. So they feel young. I, I'm just tired of it. It's mm -hmm. it's got to stop in the news. The Iran deal, uh, Donald Trump has successfully destabilized the global order again by basically saying the Iran deal is dead. But it's not. But it is. But it's not. But Congress and nobody really knows where it stands as of this moment. But it is pretty much universally agreed to that this is an incredibly dangerous and stupid and destructive thing to do. So, of course, he's going to do it mm -hmm. because he's a dangerous, destructive lunatic who listens to John Bolton and Sean Hannity. Exactly. For, yep. I'm not kidding, for foreign policy advice. Yep. And he's, again, we would have impeached Hillary Clinton 77 times. <laughs> yes, we would. <laughs> There's simply no comparison between the parties. The, the worst people on earth, I will say again, are the both siders. If, yep. if you're still a both siders at this point, you are a Republican. You're a yep. fucking Republican mole. There's no, or you're, or you're running a third party scam and you're getting money from somebody to say this bullshit. Cause, cause it's just, it's way past the time that we stop pretending that, that, both sides do it, and that there's some third way between crazy and not crazy. There's not. Um, second, Trump cannot stop being a dick about Puerto Rico. He can't do it. He he hates them for some reason, probably because they're brown and far away. Uh, but he won't send help. He treats them like third world. He treats them like his gardeners yeah. who, are, yeah. who are trying to get paid for the work they've done. He doesn't want to pay them. And he's treating them like shit, and everyone's seeing that he's treating them like shit. Bush at least at some point acknowledged that New Orleans was part of America and that at some point we should really get around to doing something about that. Donald Trump is just an asshole, a giant mm -hmm. racist asshole. And the people around him reflect him uh, perfectly. And the people who vote for him are just like him. And that's that's what's wrong with this country. Uh, more than a thousand fake Twitter accounts have suddenly popped up from Russia to follow Roy Moore. So, you know, he's got Russia on his side. So, you know, he's going to do real well. Um, clean coal would be awesome if it actually existed. Uh, it doesn't. Um, and I, but, we have a correspondent listener who yes. uh, sends us stuff all the time mm -hmm. um, about, and, and it is true, I went and Googled a lot of the things that he's talked about in his emails and also in uh, sending us uh, uh, books and so forth. Yes. Um, the Chinese are apparently making real strides in making no meltdown nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't and please don't write me about this because I do not understand the science of it. And it's mm -hmm. not something that I can put on my list of things to know about. I'm just right. I can't do it. I can't but, either. Uh, I, I do understand that the if you Google and search for no meltdown nuclear reactors, you will find out that the Chinese really are 
working on building these things. They don't require coolant. They don't have this kind of contact where uh, they, they need an exterior coolant facility and they blast them with helium. It's all kind. There's all kinds of chemical reactions that happen that create energy. That is a nuclear reactor, but it it is set up so that it is actually physically impossible for the reactor to melt down. That just there is no place in the reactor for a meltdown to occur. And I don't understand how that happens. And here's the thing. I do believe that the Chinese will have that reactor up and running if that's what they're going to, if that's what they want to do, because they're the Chinese and I believe they can do that. And if there are alternatives Mm -hmm. out there in the nuclear energy world that are safe and effective and don't produce enormous amounts of waste that will be around for waste, a quarter exactly. of a million years. Right. right. I'm all for it. I, I'm not anti-nuke because I'm, uh, because I'm automatically anti-nuke. Show me how it works and show me the alternatives, and I'm perfectly willing to have – most people are perfectly willing to have a conversation. It just doesn't come up in conversation. That what right. comes up is coal is the future. Yeah. Oh, coal around here especially. All, uh, all four of the congressmen in this part of Illinois where, you know, the – Coal, coal is king. Coal's king here, and, and you've got to have coal because jobs. Is, and it's like, there no, is no, <laughs> there is no such thing as clean coal. There, there is, is no, no such, such thing, thing as clean, clean coal, coal. Period. <laughs> and people who say there are, like the president of the United States, is lying to you yep. because he's getting money and support, and he and, and votes from people who either pay him a lot of money, or are on his side, or don't know any better. Right. Uh, Paul Manafort, Paul Manafort, apparently Man- Manafort, I think is a Manafort. better way to put it. Go right ahead. Paul Manafort <laughs> uh, apparently has a, a sixty million dollar relationship uh, with a Russian oligarch. I don't know what that means. If they just hold hands, or they it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's money laundering. It's over God the sweater, sake. under no. the dress. I'm not sure what the relationship money is, but money laundering. Uh, but yeah, the guy who ran Donald Trump's campaign is a money launderer for a Russian oligarch, mm-hmm. allegedly. Uh, mm-hmm. But he's but he's only one piece. If and if that were the only thing you knew about the Trump campaign, again, Hillary Clinton would have been impeached seventy seven times already for having anything right. like this. But the Republican Party is utterly corrupt, top to bottom, side to side, and has to go. All of it has to go. Uh, Donald Trump says he uh, said that Donald uh, said that Mike Pence wants to hang all the gay people. Yeah, and I believe ha, it. Ha, 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 I, ha, 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 ha. That's yeah. a funny joke. Right. That's no, a it's funny not joke. funny. This is what sociopaths think are funny. You know, people who call up war widows and and say, well, you know what he's getting into. You know, people who have absolutely no human emotion or contact with people or acknowledge that people exist outside of themselves. This is what sociopaths are like. And the Republican Party has elected a sociopath because the Republicans are sociopaths. They like it. They like it. Uh, 18 states are suing the Trump administration to stop him from scrapping subsidies. Um, And again, Paul Krugman did his post about lies, 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 because he just had it. He's like, how many different times do I have to? I'm an economist. I want a Nobel Prize. Um, How many different fucking ways do I need to tell you that the math is stupid? And I'll explain it to you with big pictograms if I have to. And the point is, uh, nobody listens because nobody wants to hear it because Paul Krugman is a shrill liberal yapper. And, you know, he just all talks about and, and he's been right more than he's been wrong by a whole lot. And yet here we are. Uh, in this hole where Paul Krugman and people who tell the truth and tell truth to power are given equal footing with people who gladly lie uh, all day, every day, because you have to have both because, you know, both sides are really important. Right. Um, again, uh, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump tweeted that James Comey had exonerated Hillary Clinton uh, because before the, inv- the investigation was complete. You know, apparently now uh, – he fired him because he she was on Hillary's side, as opposed to firing you him because don't, it's all he was lies. Not, or, all or lies. I fired because no, he confessed already. You see, yeah. this is the part that he, Perry yeah. Mason just takes his stuff and throws it. No, no, he already confessed. He said on television, "The reason I fired James Comey was because of Russia." Right. I right. bragged to the fucking Russians in the Oval Office. The reason I fired him was because he's crazy, and now we can deal. You've already confessed. The crime has been committed. You've already confessed. Anybody who's still fluttering around trying to make up reasons for it, like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, is just has to go to prison with you. I mean, there's enough. <laughs> yes, there's, that's there's a good a, point. <laughs> there's enough orange jumpsuits to go around, but it's like I didn't. I didn't know he didn't. No, but don't you watch fucking television? Yeah. Your boss yeah. was on TV confessing to this. You came out and said it never happened. Maybe now your job is clearly to lie, but but really this time around. This time around, the the, uh, the the Ari Fleischers of the Bush administration, the Crystals of the Bush administration, the Frums of the Bush administration, they really have to be punished 
really, really hard this time. Because this time around, this is our last chance. This is our last go round. If if we have one more cycle of these people in power, we're fucked. So mm-hmm. this time, once they are removed from power, we can't say impeachment's off the table. You know, right. well, let's all reach across the aisle and get along. No, no. This time we have to take the fight to them. There has to be no Republican Party extant at the national level by 2030. It has right. to be gone. And history right. books need to say this is a huge historical mistake. They let a bunch of crazy ass racists run this country nearly into the ground, and they were saved by the Professional Left podcast, <laughs> <laughs> among others. I hope it helps people to realize that I was primal scream therapying this this morning or this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you don't need to worry about me. I've got drift glass looking out for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this healthcare thing has hit me really hard. And the yep. roller coaster that we're on about it um, and hearing, you know, being on Twitter and seeing people saying, uh, you know, I got a letter. They, well, this woman in Washington got a letter that her nonverbal autistic son with autism, mm-hmm. uh, insurance is going to run out in 13 days. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is absolutely on purpose that that happened. That's mm-hmm. not, you know, oh, look, this there's this accident The you know, the money Whoops. ran out, whatever. Whoops. No, yeah. this is no. this is on purpose. They're doing this on purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's what infuriates me. I don't understand how someone can do how someone can hurt other people on purpose. Um, someone and someone that has been selected to be in power. Right. I just I and I I'm I'm screaming at God a lot of the times right now. Mm-hmm. Well, there, there's a there's a polling number in our notes today that I want to mention before we roll <laughs> okay. out that, that explains a great deal because there's a lot more in our notes that we're going to be able to cover tonight because we're talking right. really we fast. We have to we, go. Yeah. We, gotta, we yeah. literally have to go. But 76% of Republican voters think that the news media invents stories about Trump yep. compared to 65% of Democrats who think the news media does not. So both sides. Everybody. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. If you are a Republican, look to your left, look to your right, look in front of you. One of all but one of you thinks that the news media is is lying all the time about Donald Trump, which is why you don't believe there's a woman in Washington whose kids going to lose their, their health insurance, mm-hmm. which is why you don't believe that Puerto Rico is in trouble, which is why you don't you don't believe any of this shit. You don't believe anything. And until the House, until God smites you personally, until Donald Trump comes to your house and burns it down personally, apparently you are unable to believe that this is true, any of it's true. And that's. How fascism works mm-hmm. because yep. you're perfectly willing to close your eyes and look down and pretend because acknowledging the truth is too terrifying, A, and B, what it says about you is unsustainable. Yep. You cannot admit that you're that sort of person. You cannot admit you're a brown shirt, that you turned your back on your neighbors and you elected a monster. So you will buy anything from anyone who tells you that it's, none of it's true. None of it's true. It's all made up. It's all liberal lies. And that's why we're fucked right now. That's why we're in the position we're in now. And the only way we unfuck ourselves is to become the media, is to take on the people in the media who enable this bullshit, and to call it out when we see it for what it is in simple, clear, unambiguous language. Right. And and that does mean write to your letter to the editor, Mm -hmm. write to your congressman. But I, but I do think writing a letter to the editor, writing to writing in some sort of way that gets it into the public sphere. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I saw an insert in the paper this week. Yes, we did. Uh, an attorney, uh, an investment attorney or elder care attorney, giving a seminar on how to protect your home from the nursing home. Right. And how to how to uh, manipulate your finances so that you keep your money and Medicaid, Medicaid. or the VA pays for your nursing home care. They, they use the M word. They the said Medicaid. Medicaid is what's keeping your mom uh, in the nursing uh, home. In nursing home under good care. This is uh, what Donald Trump thinks would be a great idea to block grant it to the states mm-hmm. and let them spend it any way they want. So that Rodney is the Paul Ryan plan. Rodney Davis wants your mom to be kicked out of her nursing home. Yeah, because he Period. voted that way. Because he voted that way. There's yeah. really no, and that's yeah. it's as simple as that. Rod, local, insert name of local Republican of your local Republican here, congressman. Find out how he voted. Wants to kick, he. wants to kick my mom out of her nursing home. Right. Period. Full stop. And if you and, didn't want him, then you shouldn't have voted that way. Look it up, and you're you, you're listening to us, so you have internet access. Look up how he voted on uh, the latest budget proposal in the House, which you know, oh, that's just a guideline. That's just a no. Nope. nope. That cuts my mom's 
Medicaid nursing home. Right. Period. And that's... Find something personal to you that is cut by cutting public health mm -hmm. and push. My push kids' back. schools. My kids' Vaccines, immunizations. immunizations. Right. My right. kids' treatment. My cousin has a friend. My cousin's son. My you sister's have... cancer treatment. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. And, Why and... did my congressman, who's supposed to represent me, hurt my family, hurt this person in my family, hurt me personally? And you're not making it up. They, they're no, really you're not. doing it. No. They're really, really doing this to us, and we're really, really not going to stand for it. Right. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet quote unquote kitty, kitty is Mercy the Rabbit. Mercy has allegedly eaten through at least one phone charging cord. Oh, so what? But that was after the Senate Judiciary Oversight Committee asked her about it, so it doesn't count. Right. No, it doesn't count. It's, no, <laughs> no. It's after testimony. I think um, we have an animal in this house that ate through some mouse two, cords. Two, two mouse, mouse cord. cords. Two oh mouse cords. Because mm -hmm. they're so delicious. It's spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Let her on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local, and we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. Now is the time to announce the second winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from Yay. foxwise.biz. Foxwise.biz. Fox Check out their website to see how great they look or check out our website to see how great these particular cuffs looks. The ones we're giving away say resist and have snowflakes on either side along mm -hmm. with our URL. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG, that's Drift Glass Blue Gal, DGBG2017, 2017, for 20% off anything, including custom orders. Oh my gosh. Foxwise.biz, our winner this week is Doug May. He asked us to use his name. <gasps> Doug donates by check. Uh, Doug, you've won the bracelet cuff, and we, we're going to give you a $5 gift card to DonorsChoose.org. We found out their minimum is $10. So stuff it, Doug. You're going to get a $10 gift card. Sorry, Doug. <laughs> Deal with it, man. DonorsChoose.org. Mm -hmm. Donors choose. We love them, and yep. we hope you will give that to a school of your choice. Pass that donation along. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have promised to quit if we ever have Bill Crystal or Hugh Hewitt on this podcast. I don't think we have anything to worry about. I don't know. They're everywhere. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the flower and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.